All right, we're going to be graphing and analyzing some of these functions we've been talking about. Let's go ahead and start with f of x equals one half x to the fourth. Now, remember, tables always work to graph, and that's what we're going to be using here. So I made an x f of x table. This is just an x y table. So I plugged in negative three, I got forty point five. Plugged in negative two, got eight. Plugged in zero, got zero, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're going to want to pick your points, uh, fill out your table for these graphs. Definitely make sure you've got some good values. Let's go ahead and graph seven different values for now to get a good picture. When we've graphed lines in the past, we just needed two because they were very simple, but these ones are a little more complicated, so let's pick some more points to give ourselves an accurate picture. So if I go ahead and graph these points, I've got negative 3, 40.5. That's going to be way, way up here somewhere, so I'm not even going to put that. We've got negative 2, 8. So I'm going to have a dot about here. I've got negative 1.5. That's going to be like here. I've got 1.5. And I've got, oh, let me put that a little bit further over here. 1.5. And I've got 2, 8, and 3, way, way up at 40.5 again. Oh, I also got forgot my 0, 0. So my graph is going to look something like this which I notice based on my uh, positive and even exponent that it's going to be going the same direction, pointing up. All right, let's go ahead and analyze this, talking about some of these different concepts uh, in the last video. Our domain. Our domain is going to be all possible x values. Now, there aren't any restrictions. I've got x values for, I've got y values that match every single x value, so my domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. My range, my first y value starts at 0. I don't have any y values down here in the negative area, so my y value starts at 0 and goes all the way up to positive infinity. As we go up, we still have more and more y values, and these arrows we know it's going to keep going up and up and up. Our intercepts, it looks like we've got one intercept right here, which is actually x and y intercept. That's going to be an intercept at the point zero, zero. Our end behavior for the left, remember our end behavior we're going, as we're going to the left is approaching positive infinity. Our end behavior as we approach the right is also going up and up and up. That's also going to be positive infinity. Now, let's talk about continuity. Is this function continuous? I don't see any breaks or gaps. So yes, this function is continuous. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is continuous, continuous on negative infinity to positive infinity. That's just basically saying it's continuous for all real numbers, all x values, it's continuous. Now is it decreasing or increasing? Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more space here. We're going to be decreasing, decreasing. Let's take a look at our graph here. As we move from the left to the right, this is going downward. This whole section has a negative slope. So we're going to be decreasing from negative infinity, all x values negative infinity, all the way to zero, right? At zero, we have a shift, and now the graph is moving upwards, so we're increasing. So we're going to be increasing all the way from zero to positive infinity. In this one, we have f of x equals negative x to the seventh. Now we have a negative, uh, negative a term, a negative in the front, and an odd exponent, so we know it's going to be going opposite ways uh, going downward. But let's go ahead and make our table anyway. Here we have uh, a table I've pre-made for us. Let's graph our points. We've got negative 3, 2187, so way, way, way up here. Negative 228, way, way up there somewhere. We've got negative 1 and 1. We've got 0, 0. We've got positive 1, negative 1. 2, way down, down here. Negative 128 and 3. Negative 2187, way down here. So if I do did graph these, now imagine those super, super high points that I wasn't able to draw because they're so high and so low, but we'd get a graph that looks something like this, which is what we predicted based on 
our odd power and our negative uh, a term in the front. And let's go ahead and analyze this. Our domain, our x values, we've got no restrictions. We've got a y value for every x value. So again, our domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range this time, we actually do have y values for each, uh, each part of the graph. So our range is also going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Intercepts, it looks like our intercept again is at 0, 0. 0, 0. Our end behavior as we go to the left here is going up to positive infinity. Our end behavior as we go to the right is going down all the way to negative infinity. And I don't know why I put a parentheses there. I don't need that parentheses. We just have a negative infinity. And our continuity, again, this is a continuous function, no gaps. So we are continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. Once again, let's go ahead and look at where we're decreasing. Now here we're decreasing, we're, we're going from the left to the right and we're moving downward. Here we're still moving down, 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 down. It looks like the whole graph is decreasing. So we're decreasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. As we move from the left to the right, the whole graph continues moving down. So are we increasing at all? No, we are not increasing because obviously we're decreasing on the whole graph.